welcome to Radio Labyrinth Season 9, Episode 14. I'm Tim, there's Jeff, there's Dustin. Steph is uh, not with us this week, but she will be returning soon. She's in Detroit right now, and hopefully she brings back some delicious cookies from the Detroit Cookie Company, right? Right? We love those cookies, don't we? That peanut butter one, what is that one called? They, uh, they haven't been selling that one lately. I keep checking back to the website every now and then, looking for it, but... The peanut they butter volcano. Do it every now and then. Yeah, the peanut butter volcano. That's the one that broke me in 2020. She she ordered us cookies from that place, and I got it for my birthday. And I, at that point, I'd been on a on a station diet. You know, I was endorsing this uh, diet company, and I'd lost all this weight. And that cookies, those cookies came. I think there were six of them. I'm like, oh. <laughs> that was it. That was it. That was the end of it for me. I was eating like you would not believe. Um, so. Uh, welcome. If you're a new viewer to Radio Labyrinth and you stuck around after you saw us in your algorithm and it said, hey, there's a picture of Joe Rogan on that. I'm going to see what they have to say. Thank you for sticking around because, uh, yeah, we like it. Don't we, Jeff? Yeah. Uh, don't we, Dustin? Yes, of course we do. So algo surfing is is the rage, right? Algo Algorithm surfing. We've been uh, surfing safari on the algorithm. Uh metacasting in the labyrinth if you will uh it's they say it's turtles all the way down it's reaction podcasts all the way down people are making a living by talking about other people making a living talking about things and it's, it's really bizarre this this there's this whole subgenre of people and we've touched on it before that they talk about the main podcasts that are out there, you know, uh, sometimes they'll talk about Tim Dillon, but not very often. Uh, they always talk about Rogan and his guests and anybody in that Rogan uh, universe. You got, uh, of course, Tom and Bert, two bears, one cave. And then you have Andrew Schultz and a couple other people. Brendan Schaub. I don't think he's doing anything anymore. Uh, but he's uh, still they doing all, that podcast. He does. OK, well, they all come out of that that Rogan you know, Rogan started it all. Uh, they overanalyze uh, the, the comedian podcasts. Um, and uh, there, there's a bunch of them. Let's see. There's Podcast Cringe, who primarily, I think, and Dustin, you jump in here. I don't know. Jeff, you don't watch any of these, right? No. But you're aware of them. You see them. Yeah. Um, and I know, Dustin, you watch a couple of them, but uh, Podcast Cringe is the one I watch the most. They focus primarily on Joe Rogan and, and his world, and their most recent episode is called The Truth About Joey Diaz. And then you have two... Go ahead. Well, I was just going to... I mean, and we can go eat through each one of these if you want, but The uh, the Truth About Joey Diaz, it's weird. They, they go back through the history of, like, Rogan's podcast they'll look at each time joey was on there mm -hmm. and they you know as the the, the modern term uh keep receipts i guess yeah. is is what they're doing so like with this one they say that there was a time when joey was on rogan and i remember this when he would come on and he would just talk about all the stuff that he would get girls to do that were up-and-coming comedians at the comedy store and uh then he flashes forward and shows you another clip where it's more modern in the last couple of years where Joey's and Joe are both, you know, downing that type of behavior. Behavior, Yeah. Yeah. Now you watch that original clip and you can tell how old it is because it looks, it's, it's not high definition. Joe doesn't have that big studio. Yeah, it's like three studios back. Yeah. 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 And uh, Joey's talking about, yeah, I used to make girls get out and then they give me a blowjob to get into the uh, uh, to get into the main room at the comedy club. That's just the way it works. And Joe's like, oh, how many? Did you? Uh, 20. Uh, that was interesting to find out. And then these things just sort of topple into each other. Like, Dustin, have you ever watched Too Lazy to Try? Yeah, I've watched a few of those. I'm not he that person reaches out to a more comedians. He's broad, right? It's yeah. more comedian. Like this week, uh, his episode is. Uh, uh, Hassan Piker. I don't know who that is. Is he a comedian? That was one I didn't know either. Yeah, I don't oh, know who yeah. that is either. Steven Crowder, who is allegedly a comedian. Uh, yeah. And, uh, of course, he, he talks about Bert and Tom. But his shows are shorter than Podcast Cringe. They're also okay to watch. Basically, these are... Uh, this is entertainment tonight for the podcast world, really. If you go back to the 80s, the only thing where you would hear celebrity gossip outside of, you know, like Rona Barrett, if you remember who that was... And Barbara Walters and stuff like that. This is it. Entertainment Tonight or Access Hollywood. 
So we're not we're we're not going to critique any any comedians podcast. We're going to critique the critique podcasts. Is that yes. what we're doing? Okay, yeah, that's what, that's what meta about it. That's all where the show is going to be from now on. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And then uh, another one that I like to watch from time to time is Comedy Enforcement. And uh, they, oh, they suck. <laughs> they do. You don't like them? You don't even know. <laughs> yeah, they suck. They don't talk about Joe Rogan enough. The latest episode of theirs is Joe Rogan calls out Donnell Rawlings for lying about Kill Tony Meltdown. Kill Tony, a podcast that I've never watched. What is Kill Tony? Is oh, really? It's Tony, Tony Hinchcliffe. He, he was on the, the first Impractical Joker Screws, and they did a Kill Tony live on, on the boat. I see that they have comics on and they do. Yeah. It, it looks yeah. like too many people that it would that it wouldn't work for me. But go ahead. It's, what is yeah, it? it's like a they, they they always have like a dais table, which has like Tony and the and the usually the comedian guests, sometimes Joe, sometimes other people. And then, like it's, like a, people. then it's like a open mic kind of they pull yeah. names out of a hat and let people do five minutes or whatever. Yeah. OK. And that they just cool. critique so, them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. all right. So they do. So they have established comedians do five minutes and they critique them. Nah, I don't know no. if they're established. I think these are guys that would do open, mic open mics. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. Well, I watched that Don L. Rawlings uh, Rogan thing, and uh, Rogan ends up calling Tony on the phone and goes, oh, "Did it happen that way?" Oh, la, la. they go back and forth. So basically, these are the shows that that break down the moments, and I think they work. I think they work in a, in a way, but they all take a lot of effort to shit on Bert and Tom. Tom and Bert are. Definitely out there with a bullseye on their heads by these. Yeah, pictures. they're probably making the most money podcasting after Rogan. Yeah, Rogan. Rogan definitely makes the most money. But there's one. It doesn't have a YouTube page for the entire show. This guy has a, a clips and the clips are about an hour long. You think clips 10 minutes, 15 minutes. No, his clips are an hour, sometimes a little bit over. And it's called Red Bar. Red Bar uh, radio, uh, and his name is, what is his name? His name is Mike David, right? Mike David. Yeah. Mike David. Uh, he does everybody and he does brutal takedowns. He crucifies people. It's bi-weekly and get this, Jeff, it, his shows are eight hours long. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, it's easy to have an hour long clip when you have eight hour shows. Right. Uh, his name is Mike David. Uh, they've been on, he's been doing this podcast mostly off and on, but mostly on for 20 years and was one of the first podcasters. And so I started watching these clips and I couldn't figure this guy out. He has a great studio, great camera equipment. He kind of does a little parody of radio. He has a sound effect bar, but it's just one sound effect. It's an explosion. And he uses it all the time. And he's very polarizing. If you go to Reddit and read about him, people like, he is all, his only, his fans are incels. And basement dwellers who hate blah 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 blah, and then he. Oh, that's that. why you listen to it. I'm, but I'm not an incel. <laughs> I'm a um, cell married uh, celibate. Anyway, the uh, that's a joke. But this guy, he, he, you know, it's he's up in Chicago, and he's 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 always you know touching himself, and he wears sunglasses, and he hits the thing, and it goes, <sighs> and he's always talking about you know he's always moving. I'm getting it right, Dustin. He's he's yeah. always around and uh and talking about Bert and talking about Tom and pointing out the things that they but it's an entertaining takedown and I think a lot of it is a bit I think a lot of him is a bit um you know Tim Heidecker does the same thing uh once in a while with 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 these types of shows he's made fun of Rogan before you ever see that episode he did where it's just completely Rogan and it's all made up he's talking to like a UFO guy and he's he's just He's embodying Rogan. Yeah. They do um, one where he'll cut clips, like they'll take yeah. Rogan and, and cut out stuff, and all of a sudden he'll be talking to, to Rogan, and it looks like any other show. Mm hmm Yeah. It makes him say all kinds of stuff. And, I mean, that's 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 where my entertainment is coming from. But I'm I'm starting to, to get into this Mike David guy. I don't know that – I think if you have an eight-hour show and you have two weeks to watch it before the next eight-hour show, you might be able to uh, – you might be able to, to, to finish it. Um, but I, I did a deep dive into this guy. It's like, I got to know, is this guy a bit, is this fake? And I guess in the early two thousands, he, he was a stand up comedian and he was doing podcasting and then he got involved with and opened a comedy club, like a hip comedy club in Chicago. And it became a go-to place that people really enjoyed. 
And then he got screwed over by his partner somehow, and and he got bitter, uh, as you would be if you get forced out of something that you created and that you love. And uh, I guess he just created this sort of persona or evolved or adapted into it. And if if you're one of those people that likes these shows, like Podcast Cringe, they reference him from time to time, or Too Lazy to Try, this is just eight hours of that and other things too. Um, but he's also, he'll point out his episode, his most recent clip is Tom Segura's latest scam. And there's some TV show that Tom is selling that he created on their network and you can stream it for two weeks and then you don't own it. Um, and then he, he's also talking about the Joey. It, it's just, it's just strange. Joey Diaz, um, threatened him to kill him. Yeah. He, yeah I'm gonna look you gotta look over his shoulder I don't I don't think he's yeah, it was like a mob it was like it was like a mob type yeah yeah and and uh and red bars just making fun of him the whole time uh you know it, you're you're being criticized you don't have to threaten to kill somebody and uh and also that Sam Tripoli do you guys know who Sam Tripoli is yeah yeah he's a comedian but he's a he's one of those podcasters who uh, talks about conspiracies and stuff. He got real mad. And I think he actually like stalked him or something. Allegedly. I don't know. I didn't dive that deep into it, but I've been on a podcast with him. Uh, Binkley, uh, you guys know Binkley. I've been on his podcast before conspiracy podcast. He also had Sam Tripoli on and I found that guy to be, uh, he was in his car and he was just doing, and he wouldn't pay attention to anything I had to say. I was pissed. I was like, why am I on this show? And I tried listening to his podcast, but I just can't do it. Do you guys listen to him? No. No. I don't. I mean, yeah. I've, I've heard him before. It's just he kind of gets on my nerves. Yeah, exactly. He has one, a grating voice. Yeah. And uh, he, he doesn't sell the conspiracies entertainingly. Other people do it entertainingly. Uh, so, but Tim Dillon... Uh, famously once said in this universe there will be podcasts that talk about podcasts so my point is why not be a podcast that talk about podcasts that talk about podcasts it's a niche <laughs> yeah and uh and uh, we're nice though and we don't hate people so that's the you know we we prefer most of the time and I, I know i didn't used to be this way but we for the most part if if we keep it moving you know what i mean yeah. and uh, keep it keep it canon keep it moving and keeping in uh, in tradition with our new tradition of talking about the podverse, uh, Jeff posted this story, and I know because he he put a Jim Gaffigan joke in it. Jim Gaffigan has a booze uh, game thing going now, right? Bourbon? Yeah. Yeah. How father, do you find father Time Bourbon. Now, does he have a podcast? I don't think so. I don't, I don't think, think so. I know he does a lot. He does a lot of them, but he's selling his vodka. Now, is he schlepping it around with him and selling it at his... Uh, at his <laughs> no, it's, it's bourbon. Yeah, bourbon. I think bourbon is probably better than vodka. I think every vodka tastes the same. Shitty. Well, yeah, the process of making vodka, the only thing that you can do different is the amount of times that you purify it. You try to, yeah. you know, that's the only thing you can do to vodka. Whereas with bourbon, you know, you can age it in different barrels. You can, yeah. you know, use different things, but. And it tastes better. I could drink. I could drink a bourbon, right? I could drink, sip on a bourbon, maybe put some ice in it, probably. Vodka, I I mean, just it's like, why don't you just pour rubbing alcohol or shaving cream down your throat? I don't, <laughs> I don't get it. And, but then again... Have you, you tried know, Crystal Skull Vodka? That's that's pretty good. That's pretty close. Have you tried the Crystal Skull Vodka yet? Have you tried the Crystal Skull Vodka yet? Well, we're going to talk about him in a little bit because we watched the Steve Martin documentary. But yeah, I don't care that if you want to, if you're a comedian and you're out there, I, all the shows we were talking about shitting on Tom and Bert for selling their vodka. Why not? I mean, you know, you got fans, you have something you want to sell. I heard the, their vodka is not good though. No vodka is good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what do you, no vodka, you can, oh, this is $400 bottle of vodka that has been kept under the Arctic ice in Northern Russia for 200 years. And you can buy it now. It's still going to taste like rot gut fucking shit. Like <laughs> and box. Well, it's Anthony Jeselnik also has been kind of ragging on, on Tom and Bert for the vodka without mentioning their names uh -huh. at all. Yeah. But his point I liked was, you know, you, you make all this money because you have this huge podcast, you make all this advertising money, but it's not enough. They have to right. go after their blue collar fans That's who, it. That's who it. already pay for everything and ask them to turn around and then purchase, you know, hundred dollar bottle of vodka. 
And yes. yeah, it's just it's it's greedy is all it is. It I is mean, greedy. But I don't want to like I don't I, I've never met Tom Sakura. And this is a weird thing because I met Burt Kreischer and I've talked to Burt Kreischer and I've interviewed him once on this podcast a long time ago. But Burt Kreischer is one of the nicest people in the industry that I've ever met. And when the microphone goes on, he's on. When the microphone goes off, he's talking to you like you're a human being and he's making you laugh and he's laughing at the things you're saying. And you know that it's genuine. And I've always felt that way about him. Uh, you know, he's a storyteller. I don't think he's like a stand-up comic with a bunch of jokes. I think everybody knows that. But it's difficult for me to hate on the guy. But I can see it in Tom Segura's eyes that he just give me money. I want my money. Money. Yeah. Money. 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 And his stand up hasn't been I mean, he he has three or four really good funny albums or specials. And then the last couple I don't think have been very good. I think his last one wasn't very good. He he was way funnier when he was fat. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And even when he had lost a little bit of weight, not not getting into the whole oh, I'm gonna be boat now. He's a funny guy, I think. What he's gonna have to do is have a colossal failure and a flop and get down into there and get the eye of the tiger back. That's what he's going to have to do. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's see. Uh, in, also in the pod verse, Steve-O. Uh, Steve-O. <laughs> he was asked to go on the Bill Maher show, and he, he said, hey, you know, I've been sober for 16 years. Do you think uh, Bill could maybe not smoke pot while while I'm in there? And they said, no. Uh, B- Bill Maher called it a deal maker. You can't not smoke pot for one fucking hour. Talk about yeah. Eric. That's the whole point of his show, though. I know. it's Well, he has booze there, too. But if you invite somebody on your show and you obviously you've done a little bit of research, maybe he didn't do any research. Um, but uh, he asked, you know, hey, could you not smoke pot? I don't want to be around it. And he, he, he no, can't come on the show. I think that's a win win for everybody, I suppose, in that. <laughs> Devo yeah, has yeah. A, has his own podcast and he sets his rules. Um you know, like if Bill Maher was going to go do his show, Bill Maher's writer says he needs two hookers. And if you don't have the two hookers, he's not going to do the show. Mm, I wish I could do Bill Maher. There's only one person who does a good Bill Maher. What's his name? Kyle Dunnigan. He's uh, He does the best Bill Maher and he does the best Joe Biden out there. You guys know who that is, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 But anyway, uh, so, hey, Steve-O, I think you did yourself a favor not going on that show because she's just going to get high and and talk to you about, meh. you'd think I'd be able to do it with the, the stuffed up nose, but I'm not going to waste anybody's time doing that. Um, so, so I'll just go back to doing um, Red Bar. Um, yeah, so there's Tom and he's, and he's selling uh, vodka. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Before we wrap uh, your conversation about the uh, p- uh, the podverse, I would like to, uh, 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 Jeff, uh, address a couple of things. I have a guest coming up this weekend on, on the Bernie pod. Feel the burn. That is the name of the podcast. Oh, feel the burn. Uh, we have a great guest this week. By the way, I did not end up having sex with Ayala. I wanted to, but, you know, I'm true to my wife and I wouldn't cheat on her. Uh, Howie Mandel from America's Got Talent. Uh, Howie Mandel uh, does stuff, which is his podcast with, uh, I guess, his daughter. Uh, St. Elsewhere. Remember that show? St. Elsewhere. He used to put the glove on his head and blow it up in the Bobby cartoon. Uh, and then he did the briefcase show. Uh, well, he'll be coming on. But by the way, I have a brand new malt liquor. I'd like to call it Bernie's <laughs> Malt Liquor. It is uh, handcrafted malt liquor. And I'll be taking it out uh, to the comedy clubs. And uh, we're going to take the podcast on tour, you know, because if, uh, if uh, you know, these comedians are selling vodka and, uh, you know, uh, basketball, whatever they sell, I'm going to be doing that. And and by the way, we are out of the Korean barbecued flavor of vaginal cream, but we are having new ones made and we're going to have new flavors, too. It's called Smell Afresh. Uh, just go to Bernie Podcast United 257.org slash html sex and use code word bernie at checkout and you'll get an extra tube of vaginal cream probably the strawberry or the coconut like i said we're out of the korean barbecue and you can get that with your malt liquor and uh that's delicious thank you (laughs) 
trailers and trains with Steph. Dustin, are we going to talk about this apocalypse that's coming on the 8th? The, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the eclipse? Apocalypse yeah. eclipse? Monday, April 8th? Now, every time there's an eclipse, we have one. What was the last total we had here? Like 2017? It was 2017, but it wasn't where we were. There wasn't uh, a totality. All the the conspiracy theories, you know, around this, it's just like all that's on TikTok and and uh, YouTube you right. know, people, you know, coming out of the woodwork. Uh, Nineveh, the biblical association with it was, you know, it was in the Old Testament in the time of yeah. Jonah. And it was supposed to be the towns that were destroyed because of God's wrath. And mm-hmm. um, people try to you know, make, you know, turn America and, and use it as an alleg- you know, an allegory yes. or whatever. Well, I'm going to fly my Learjet up there to catch that because uh, my horse didn't win at Saratoga, even though you're so was- vain. I know I'm vain. <laughs> uh, you know who talked about that a lot on his podcast? Um, uh, we're having a good time. It's Dusty Slay. Dusty Slay. I don't know what's going to happen. There's a lot of people. I'm going to try to get this voice right. You guys are just going to have to bear with me. And if you're mad, I'm sorry. There are a a lot of people who are saying that things are going to get crazy because it goes through a lot of towns that are named after biblical terms. And there's a point of it, part of it, where it makes an X. And there's also a devil horn comet and probably aliens. What fate lies ahead for humanity as the moon shadow passes through towns? I'm losing it. Uh, <laughs> Name that. We're having a good time. After Bible stuff. Uh, so, I don't know. I love listening to his podcast. He did it solo without his wife. And uh, he, he he's talking about all these things that are happening. Yeah, there's... It, what's weird, and the one thing that's strange, there has have been a lot of actual municipalities that have sent out notifications mm-hmm. about making sure you have water, batteries, things that you would during a natural disaster. And, you know, I guess the, a lot of the questions are, why are, why is the government telling you that this is a possibility when if it's nothing to worry about? Well, that's the day they're going to start World War Three against Russia, obviously. Put that you one on the list. that turtle. You could have eaten that turtle that you ran into. A, <laughs> make yourself some turtle soup. Uh, so everybody's getting on the bandwagon. Um, it, your government is is crazy. By you know, there's kids have uh, in Georgia are on spring break this week, and they go back to school on. They should go back to school on Monday the eighth. But a lot of municipalities gave them the day off for the eclipse. We're not even going to be able to see it. By the way, yeah, it's, it's gonna, not even going to be. You can't see it at all here. But they're worried about the chaos that's going to happen, and I'm not sure I know what that chaos is. Dustin, you're 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 laying it out, but I'm a little worried about what it could be. Yeah, I, I think I, that it's going to be like God will have a magnifying glass and just go searing right through the. Well, I mean, when when you look at when you any time there's been an eclipse, I mean, going back to prehistoric times, it's always looked at as something mystical or magical, and until you get to your modern times where we have you know, science to tell us exactly what it is. Yes. Um, and that kind of takes away the scariness of it. But at the same time, you've got this whole subset of people who just look at anything that happens in the world as a sign of yes. something bad. And I think social media is probably worse for that than anything else in history has been. Yes. Yes, it is. It's absolutely worse than that. Why 2 k two four? Right. Right. Yeah. Y two K when our computers were going to stop working, but they didn't. Two thousand twelve. Mm-hmm. Aztec calendar, same thing. Mayan calendar. Mayan, oh, calendar. Mayan calendar. Yeah. Like yeah. They it, kept it, they kept trying to make us all buy new Mayan calendars. I know. Like what I already got a giant stone with the future of the world predicting it. Well, uh, if nothing happens, we're proven right. If something happens, it won't matter because you won't be able to yell at us. It's like, uh, Radio Labyrinth said no, nothing was going to happen, so I didn't go out and buy water and beans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and if that happens to you, just leave us a comment below. Yeah. Let us know what you are out on YouTube. Yeah, like and subscribe and uh, tell us your song. Let us, that... let us know where your bunker is. Yeah, and we'll bring you, Jeff, we'll bring you a turtle. Dustin, you got to catch the turtle. Jeff will deliver it. Okay. And then I'll make sure that everything went well. And like and comment. Hey, Jeff brought me a turtle. 
and I will not go hungry during Armageddon. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you very much for all of that. Uh, if they turn on CERN and they shoot particles at this uh, eclipse, uh, I don't think that that's going to rip a hole in the in the space time continuum. But it would be cool if it did, and we all ended up in the fifties with the same technology, sort of. Uh, that would be kind of cool because then food would taste better and uh, cigarettes would be cheaper. Be harder to get weed, but you know where there's a will, there's a way. You just go to an inner city and find a jazz group. Hey, you got any weed? You'll be set. Um, what else? What else? Oh, yeah, there is going to be some hornet or devil horned comet you'll be able to see. Yeah, uh, we won't. But I mean, if you want to, you'll be able to see it. And then there's uh, about 20 to 30 ships coming filled with uh, the Elohim. Uh, fallen angels <clears throat> are coming and you'll be able to see the ships and they're returning uh, to take over the earth. And uh, they're fallen angels. So if you're a good person, be careful. And I would say right now you should start sinning because when yeah, they I've been looking forward to this my whole life. Yeah, me too. Cause I just want to sin. And if I can get away with it for 50 or 60 millennia, because the, the, the bad angels are coming, I'll take my chances. Who knows? Who knows? Nah, I shouldn't sin. Don't sin. <laughs> and the, the devil's coming down to Georgia. Yeah, well, I got my fiddle rosined up. I'm ready for him. I'm going to hop. I have a pine. It's not a hickory tree, but I have a pine stump in my front yard, and I'm going to hop up on it. And uh, I think I got some chicken in the bread pan out back picking out dough and uh, granny's dog bites. So whatever. We'll figure it out. Come on, rapture. Woo. Clear that traffic in Atlanta for at least seven years. <laughs> Guys, are you reading the online comments? Gotta read some of these comments. I'm loving your guys' comments. You're reading your own comments? Yeah, they're really good. I worked hard on them. The secret is, don't read the comment cards. Let's read some YouTube comments. Poop ship. Now that you know, I think, is a new listener. Because I've never seen poop ship before. So thank <laughs> you for the comment. At poop ship says, the Bernie bit just made me spit my drink on my tablet. Appreciate that. You're welcome. <laughs> No Biden will buy you a new uh, at Flash Fuchs, who is Fuchs. He says homicide in New York was fantastic. I miss hearing that accent. Uh, Alan B. 1974 says you guys are firing on all cylinders. Bridge took a knee. Korean barbecue. LOL. And thanks, Tim. I'll never see Shirley Temple the same again. You're going to have to go back and find out if you want to know what that's about. Well, Roby says, never mind the Korean barbecue. Coconut flavor will have me going after that stuff like a rabid wolverine. Mm, that'll make her happy. <laughs> uh, Patopo8704 says, I'm listening to a book about the Gilded Age. They discuss politicians trying to clean up New York and doing the vice there. And they talk about rooms with cubicles of young boys. Yes, I've heard that story before. Uh-oh. While you were in the cubicle? Well, this was predates me wow oh, okay uh we got a little criticism at music always dash ll5 mh says all respect laws for saying you like ortega i never had a problem with daniel ortega i thought that he did <laughs> well, uh fighting the 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 sandinistas back in the 80s and then he eventually became president of nicaragua and totally fucked it up what do you want from me i can't they make it. excellent taco kits they do he's they're adjacent to daniel ortega but the ortega taco people fantastic they make good taco stuff. Uh, Jen Ortega does not deserve the career she has had and is not a good actor. She's ruined two extraordinary legacies, the Adams Family and Scream, and now they're having her destroy another. Hey, we're not making her do it. Hollywood is. <laughs> She's easy on the eyes. I guess that's sexist, but whatever. Lone Wolf dash W6 WU6YN says Meryl Streep still supports Roman Polanski. That exposes her true nature. Hey, I can't disagree. No. Don't mind. Hey, rest in peace to Joe Flaherty. He passed away this week at the age of 82. One of the funniest guys from SCTV. Of course, he did all sorts of things. He was on uh, Freaks and Geeks. Uh, what else was he in, Jeff? One Hunt. Crazy Summer. One Crazy Summer, that's right. Anyway, where's Aki? Oh, he's out on a mission for his old man. A mission, sir? 
He's on the beach collecting shells. That's a little bit more like Aki's speed. Aki, what are you doing? Your dad said you were collecting shells. Shells? My dad gets 12 bucks a piece for them. They make great paperweights. Happy Gilmore? Happy Gilmore. Check it. Hey, Gilmore. You suck, you jackass. <laughs> Check it. Uh, very, very talented and funny guy. And, and uh, they're, they're all getting older. They're all getting older. And we're all getting older, too. But um, if you've never seen SCTV or you want a refresher, there's tons of them on YouTube. And I know they probably don't get any money for that. They do have an official channel, but I don't know how many of the original episodes are on it. He, uh, he Didn't he play the station manager of SCTV? Yeah. They always had yeah. And yeah. he did a really good Bing Crosby impression. Yeah, my favorite was his... Uh... Was it the Saturday afternoon movie host? The vampire guy? Yeah. Yeah. He was in the vampire outfit, Dr. Tongues. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. But he had Dr. My favorite one was Dr. Tongues' Evil House of Pancakes with John yes. Candy. It's going to be scary. Oh! <laughs> Would you like some more pancakes? <laughs> Oh, let's see. Uh, The X-Files creator says, uh, that would be Chris Carter. So studio executive asked, where's the sex appeal about Gillian Anderson? Uh, He's calling the new reboot a hard job since everything's a conspiracy now. And I don't think Chris Carter said that, but Chris, it's the new showrunner. Listen, you're not going to recapture the magic of uh, the original show. I think uh, even the movies themselves were pretty much all terrible. The first one was okay because it was in line with what was going on during the series. The fan base will still watch it, though, because they want to see Mulder and Scully. They're not going to be in it. They might come in as cameos, but but it's going to be, of course, putting new agents in a new era, you know, into this, which... Go ahead. You can't you can't bring back up the early '90s because you know that was the the uh, inception of the internet was happening at the same time. Yes, you know, like all, all this fandom was occurring that was new. I mean, we didn't have you know uh, TV internet fandom, and X Files was one of the first ones to have that. Yep, yep, and uh, yeah, that was that Art Bell era and the Lone Gunman, uh, and the show was new and it was interesting and it, it really you know, caught fire and, and people loved it. And now like the, there are too many conspiracies. Who, what are you going to, it's not going to be aliens. Uh, it's not what, cause you got Joe Rogan for all that. You don't need the X files, but you, you really aren't going to capture the magic that, it, that it once had. And, you know, it's just going to be FBI agents rounding up, uh, alien connected January 6th protester. So I don't know, whatever drug dealers. I don't know, but I'm not into it. I, I like to watch the old ones from time to time. But I am starting to watch more new stuff instead of just rewatching things. I figure if I'm going to rewatch something, I have, to, I have time to watch something new. That's my message. That's my motto. But I'm behind on everything. So there's that. Did you floor fuckers watch Curb Your Enthusiasm this week? I have not watched the most recent one. I have not watched the penultimate yet. So don't spoil it. You just gave me a joke. But the last couple of episodes, of, I think every one has progressively been funnier than in, than the previous one. Is it funny? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'll check it out. Hi, it's Bernie Sanders uh, for the pod burn and all that. Spring is here and we're excited for warmer weather. Stop in to Atlanta Pizza and Euro uh, for one of their 16 ice cold draft beers and ciders on tap. They do not have Bernie malt liquor yet, but we're working on it. Try one of the many local craft and domestic beers uh, available in cans and, and bottles. I hope they recycle them because that's very important. Their featured selection this spring is Spring Waters. Uh, spring, uh, uh, well, hang on. Let me start over. Their featured selection is this spring is Sweetwater Brewing's Half a Gummy Fruit Punch IPA. There's a lot to unpack there. Uh, there's a pot reference. It's IPA. It's got Fruit Punch, which is what you drink when you're high. You know, the guy, the Hawaiian punch guy with the hat. Delicious. It's easy drinking, sweet tasting IPA with low bitterness and delicious fruit flavors. APG is a longtime favorite of Kanye's uh, and Covington and uh, the East Metro area of Atlanta, Georgia. They're made to order pizzas, gyros, or gyros, however you say it, pasta specialties, and Greek salads are absolutely the best around. They wish 
to sincerely thank everybody for their business and support both now and into the future. They have a food truck. Their events are going on regularly. But if you're interested in booking one, uh, just contact Mike Hall at 770-483-6228. Open for dine-in or take out Monday through Friday, 11 to 9, Saturday, 12 to 9, closed on Sundays. I don't know about the Glory Hall. You guys said earlier it was open again. I doubt it. Uh, Celebrity Voice impersonated. Do you have a commercial or residential construction printing need? Well, what are you waiting for? Contact LDI Repro Printing of Athens. They've been in Athens, Georgia since 2005. With a fast turnaround and affordable prices, call 706-316-9366. Or you can email them at athens at ldiline.com. Is views. Or, 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 or. Or and snooze. Snooze. Jeff, let's do some views or snooze. Yeah, last week was um, Steve, which we watched. Did you both fantastic? Both watch it. The uh, both yeah. both yeah. parts. I watched the first part and then watched the second one. The second, second part's just as good as the first. It's yeah. just as good, but it's vastly different, and in, yeah. in the storytelling is different. But it's so good, and I loved all that stuff I didn't know from the first episode. So. If you it's amazing it. the amount of footage that he had. Yeah. yeah. See, that's the thing. Most people don't do that. And he kept a record of everything. And, uh, you know, all the, the cool photos, like when he took the picture on The Tonight Show. Yeah. yeah. He still had all that stuff. That's really cool. And I I want to get that comic strip book when it comes out. Yeah, me too. So, yeah, that's the only thing I watched, though, from last week. I watched Parish, the first episode of that. The G- Giancarlo Esposito New Orleans show. It's pretty good. Yep. I saw it's one of those a- AMC drama. Oh, it is. People said it wasn't yeah. very good, though. You like it, so it's probably yeah, it was all right. That's not uh, peak, peak TV, I don't think, but it was it was entertaining. He's good in anything. He could read the phone book; it'd be fine. Yeah, and uh, the Magic Prank Show. I watched the first couple of those. It's pretty good. It's not mm-hmm. as good as the Carbonaro Effect. I don't think this is more like kind of like one of those prank shows that used to run on like Sci Fi Channel. Uh huh. Okay. Where they would prank the people and they had like the elaborate prank set up and they film everything. Mm-hmm. So this delves into like how they set everything up and then the, the pranks are kind of secondary. But it, was, it was, it was fun. Cool. This week, uh, Ripley starts on Netflix. Yeah. I was excited because I thought it was going to be related to Alien, but it isn't. No, it's not. That it's not the Ripley from Ripley's Believe It or Not. It's the talented. <laughs> I don't believe Mr. it. Ripley from that, you know, that, that movie, Talented Mr. Ripley. Yes, Got Matt Damon in it. Matt no. Damon. It's got Andrew Scott from Fleabag, and it's uh, it's all it's the whole thing is written and directed by the guy that did the Night of. Mm-hmm. So it looks pretty good. Oh, that, all, all the Night of. White. That was a good show. All right. Yeah. So- this might be something I'll, I'll check out. What network is it on? Netflix. Netflix. Okay. And uh, Star Trek Discovery comes back for the final season this week. Mm-hmm. I'm going to watch it. Cool. And uh, Sugar starts on Apple TV this week. This what is, is that? The, uh, a gender bending detective series? Yeah. Colin Farrell. I couldn't, uh-huh. I couldn't think of his name for a second there. Brain Farrell. Uh-huh. Colin Farrell show. Uh, he's, he's playing like a gumshoe detective kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Might uh, scratch your Perry Mason itch. Okay. I liked it better the first time I saw it, though, when it was called Hardcore. I ain't no stunt cock. <laughs> <laughs> Why, are they, this is a porn producer? No, I don't know what's going on. He's, he's hired to find somebody's granddaughter. Right. <clears throat> Hardcore was a good movie, if you like. This looks pretty good, though. Yeah. It does good. I mean, it it does good. It does look good. I'll give it a views, or at least the first one. Thank you, Jeff. Let's do our staff picks. My staff pick is Outlaw Posse, and it has nothing to do with the fact that I interviewed the director and star of the film Mario Van Peebles. It also stars his son, Mandela Van Peebles. It also features Whoopi Goldberg, uh, the the husband from Fargo, uh, the guy with the uh, with the eyelashes and. Uh, I can't ever say his name. Mapother, Maypother, William Maypother. He's Maypother. Yeah, Maypother. He's in it. 
Uh, it, it looks like a fun movie, like a popcorn movie, uh, video on demand. But uh, Mario Von Peebles, Van Peebles, check out <laughs> the show because... Von Hessler Doctor. Right. And uh, But we're going to try to get him on here, and I think it'll be fun. We'll do a Presents with him, and we can just talk his ass off. Yeah, mine's a, a tell on Two Bears, One Cave, and also Are You Garbage? I started the Are You Garbage one. Uh, is it both hosts on Two Bears, yeah. One Cave? Oh, cool. I can stomach tone enough. Yeah, and they, Dave just was like, I'm going to sit here, and I'm going to talk, mm-hmm. and that's yeah. all I'm going to do. <laughs> so first, first thing he does is ask for asking for an ashtray. Which oh, yeah. Funny. Uh, <laughs> did you, I was going to choose... Um, uh, Howie Mandel returned to um, uh, the Harlan Highway. It, it's fucking hilarious. Check it out. Uh, let's see, mine is uh, a show on Prime. It's not a new show. It was out um, on the MGM network last year. It's called From. Mm-hmm. Um, it's real. It's it's um, ten episodes. Steph, Steph was into this. Yeah, it's it's real this Stephen that, King. Who are, you know, adjacent. I mean, it's, it's that it's guy a, from Lost, right? Oh yeah, yeah, I love that. Yeah, from Oz. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah the uh, he he goes and basically gets put in goes into a town and then he can't get out of it, and it's it's one of those uh, you know trapped trapped in a town kind of very similar to you know like an H.P. Lovecraft or Stephen King yeah. kind of background. But um, I've wanted to watch it, but didn't want to purchase MGM to get to it, and it's finally out on Prime now. Nice. I might check that out. Yeah, Steph was way into it back when it was on. I love that guy too. He's a good actor. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you guys for your staff picks. Hey, by the way, let's do some plugs. Okay. Trambles is my Monday audio only podcast, uh, where I just talk about stuff and workshop things that are in my head. And that is in the radio labyrinth podcast feed. If you're not listening, uh, and you're just watching on YouTube, uh, you can find it there. Uh, I also host a radio show Saturday nights at 7 p.m. on 95.5 WSB in Atlanta, Georgia. You can also listen to it on 750 a.m. if you so choose. Or the WSB radio app if you live in Alaska. Uh, and then again, you can also just get the podcast, which comes out the following Monday. My uh, guest on the podcast current episode right now is T.J. Miller. I hope you enjoyed that. If you had a chance to listen to it, he's a very nice guy. Uh, this weekend, my guests are Aaron Weber, who is a comedian coming to the punchline. And also, part, he's part of the Nate Bargatze uh, uh, universe and, and the Dusty Slay universe. And uh, Dickie Barrett. Oh, by the way, Aaron does a much better Dusty impression than I do. And uh, Dickie Barrett, who is the uh, former lead singer for the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones and now The Defiant is the name of his band. He also worked for Jimmy Kimmel. So that'll be this weekend. Hey, if you like our show and uh, you're not a Patreon member, you can sign up as a Patreon member and then you get our uh, our Patreon only show that we do. Sometimes we'll watch shows and comment on them. That's something we started like remote control from MTV. And we're going to be doing that again soon. Or we just shoot the shit about stuff that we don't talk about on here. And you can find that out at uh, patreon.com forward slash Tim Andrews and uh, sign up at any level and you'll have access to that. You could also sign up at the $25 level and become a producer. Uh, We recently lost a producer and I'm sorry, I hate to see you go, but we understand. Uh, The current producers are Tim Slayton, Brian and Chelsea Smith, Jeff Peterson, Jim Fortner, Terry Fuller, Chris Chandler, Roby Neely, Mike D, Matt Carter. So if you come in at the $25 level, you are a producer and you get credit for the show every week and you get a T-shirt and a doodle from me. I can do a custom one for you or you can pick out. Just reach out to me and I will send you examples and uh, I'll print one out and send it to you. Sign it first. Send it to you. You get stickers and all that stuff. Um, And by the way, that reminds me, I have stickers to get in the mail. Uh Uh-oh. But I will. I will definitely get those in the mail. I just have to find a stamp. Okay. Uh, let's see. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, like and subscribe. Subscribe is very important. If you're a listener only, but you have access to YouTube, go to YouTube, click subscribe, and then go back to listening in the pod feed. We just need subscribers. We'd love to get to a thousand subscribers, and uh, you can help us do that. Share it with your friends. And leave a comment. We read them on the show. Make sure that uh, you go to BarkvilleDogRescue.org. Uh, don't shop. Adopt. There are thousands and thousands and thousands of animals that need a loving home and you can find your forever friend at barkville dog org 
org. And uh, that'll about do it for this episode of Radio Labyrinth. Uh, Steph will be back in a couple of weeks. We're glad everything went went well with the reason she went up there. And uh, until next time, please remember to keep it canon. Well, please say all good things come to an end. What's that got to do with this show? <laughs> <laughs>